Some of the most dangerous situations come out of people making the simplest mistakes. So in this video, we're gonna talk about five things that can help keep you and others around you safe and healthy. Number one, lack of housekeeping. And I know this sounds like a really simple item to miss and, and, really, and to take care of when you're out in the field, but a lot of people don't. And a messy and unkempt work area can pose hazards to the people that are actually working in the area, as well as people that are walking around the area as well. Spilled oil or some other kind of liquid on the floor, can, someone can slip over. If someone runs an extension cord through the work area or through a walk area without being uh, without having it secured, someone can trip over that and hurt themselves. Pallet bandings and zip ties that are broken up and flaying on the floor, if someone steps on, can be as slippery as ice. So the first thing that you can do to keep yourself and others safe is clean your work area. Number two, not using lockout tagout process whenever you're working on equipment or machinery. Several years ago, there was a guy working for waste management. And for those of you that don't live in the US, waste management, pretty much our garbage collection company. But a man was working for waste management and had to get into a trash compactor to get some material that fell in the trash compactor. And as he's in the trash compactor, the trash compactor started compacting and he didn't get out quick enough. He didn't die but he lost his legs, crushed his legs, and now he doesn't have two legs. Now, yeah, there are prosthetics and people can get false legs, but some people can and can't afford uh, that luxury. So some people are just left without legs. So it's very important. If you're working on uh, rotating equipment, if you're working on machinery or equipment in general, make sure you lock it out, de-energize it and tag it so people know that you're working on it so people don't accidentally uh, start it up and then crush your legs or arms, or electrocute you, or smash you, just whatever. Use lotto practices. And I realized that I did say trash compactor, um, probably more than I needed to. Number three, improper use of personal protective equipment. Don't know what all that was about. You walk through a work area and it's pretty easy that you're going to spot someone that's wearing a hard hat on backwards. And really the only person that's on the job site that has the approval, I guess I should say, to say to do that, are welders and that's really only whenever they're welding material together and they have their welding hoods on some hard hat manufacturers don't allow you to do that but additional to that you also have to inspect your equipment properly and make sure you replace it whenever it needs to be replaced you can go to the work areas and you can see a lot of safety glasses or a lot of face shields that are scratched up all the heck and it's very hard for the employee to see out of them those are the times where you need to replace the equipment to get a new one so people can actually see what they're doing. Fall protection equipment, you can see storage in gang boxes or the back of trucks or, or just regular storage locations that are that are stored with uh, saw, saw blades and other sharp objects that could rip into the material. It is very important that you inspect your equipment and it is very important that you replace it when you need to because damaged equipment is not going to do anything but increase the likelihood of you getting injured in the case that you needed to actually save you. And check out this playlist right up top for a few videos that I made that gives you tutorials on how to inspect your gloves, your hard hat, and your glasses. Number four, not having a process or a plan put together before you're going out to the field and do some work. But uh, before we get to that one, if you're enjoying this video, why don't you, uh, you know, go down and hit the like button. I'll wait for you. Go ahead, hit that little minimize button right there minimize video, hit the little thumbs up button, and uh, yep, go back and hit the maximize button, bring it back full screen, and uh, we're back? Okay, let's go. Which one were we at? Oh yeah, number four. Having a process or plan put together before you go out to the work area, because winging it has always served us pretty well whenever we need to get done. A lot of workplace injuries occur when people go out to the field and try to do, uh, try to do work that was outside scope or is an unplanned activity. They don't understand the full process and the full scope of what it entails to do the job safely. It really doesn't matter how the job gets done, but sitting down, setting up a plan, and asking yourself those what if questions can help you identify the hazards that are in the area and the mitigating factors that can be put in place to help keep you and others around you safe. Number five, <laughs> this one, this one really grinds my gears. You know, that really grinds my gears. <sighs> Failure to communicate. What? we've got here is failure to communicate. If we had to rank these on this list, this one have to probably be the easiest one that could be performed to prevent workplace injuries. If you're work, if you're walking outside in the work area, if you're doing a walk down, if you're just stretching your legs, you're just, you're out in the field and you identify something that's wrong, you identify hazard or unsafe activity, stop, 
and talk to someone. If you come across a work area and you identify a hazard, correct the hazard if you have the ability to do so. If you see some water on the floor, go get a wet floor sign and put it at the wet spot so everybody knows that it's there. Additionally, if you see the water on the floor, you could uh, try to clean it up. Not too high and mighty to get a rag, wipe it up. But I digress, not really. But if you walk by an area and you see something that's hazardous, if you see something that needs to be corrected, don't just leave the work area and go back to your desk and write an observation. Find someone nearby that you can talk to to raise the, the issue to them as well, or ask them to stand by as you go get someone that can actually fix the area or fix to correct the hazard. But don't leave a hazard that you've identified without at least trying everything that you can to communicate the hazard to someone else. Or if you know who's, who is over that area, get a hold of them, get them to get over there and fix it. It's not a, uh, it's not difficult. I realize that I might sound condescending in some of this, but it just blows my mind how people can identify hazards and not try to do everything that they can to correct that in order to protect others that are around them. But that's just, uh, that's just me. Look, communicating the hazards and failures in the process is an essential element in protecting ourselves and our coworkers. So we have to talk to each other. Thanks for watching everyone. If you wanna watch more videos like this, make sure you go down and hit the big red subscribe button with the little bell icon next to it so you can get notified of all future content. And if you enjoyed this video, consider sharing it to help spread the word about us and in turn, help keep others safe. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care of each other.